No. In front of Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> right to the point, man. She's like, are you going to marry him? Uh, and I wh- told her. How did he handle it? Well, first she said that to just me. Yeah. Like, Maybe this. And I was like, it's going to take a lot longer to know the answer. Oh, good idea. And yeah. then later she asked in front of him, and I was like, what did I tell you last time? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, what did she tell you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and instead she just looked at him and got real close and was like, are you going to marry her? <laughs> <laughs> because getting closer will bring out the answer. Yes, instead That's I'll actually usually like my tactic. <laughs> you get closer to people, they're going to tell like, you okay. something. They're like, okay. Uh, so I'm like post night shift and um, all of a sudden heard the scratching at my window so my room is like blacked out right because I sleep during the day well I go under my curtains and because I hear the scratching there's a baby bunny that in your house no so like my window (laughs) (laughs) so like there's like a little crawl space so Mm -hmm. like if there's a fire i could get out basically okay um and a bunny fell through the little grate and was crawling like scratching at my window and trying to like hop up against the sideways and like the walls and trying to escape so i had to climb into this crawl space (laughs) And I was so afraid he was going to bite me. He yeah, didn't. That's good. I got oven mitts. <laughs> yes. Picture me. Totally sleep deprived. <laughs> Bilateral oven, minute, oven mitts. Going into this little tub. <laughs> and I rescued him, though. Oh, you're so nice. He's alive and well. You just let him free? Uh, yeah. That is funny. He ran away. Happy camper. Yeah. It's so funny. Huh. Um, so we're on the pod today with Miss Nadine. <laughs> Nadine, let's hear a little bit about yourself. Oh, did you hear about my interview when they said, tell me about yourself? No, I didn't. And I said, I like children. <laughs> and then I was like, I'm applying to an adult job. And adults. <laughs> and that was the extent of tell me about yourself. <laughs> I've got two parents. That still are married and together. Mm -hmm. And then two older sisters who are twins, a little brother and a little sister. My older sisters are married. My little brother's married. Me and Dana are kicking it, being (laughs) single. (laughs) So one, so five? Yes. Five. And you were raised, uh, what religion? As a Christian. As a Christian. Yes. I feel like that's a pretty broad, like, term. Yeah. It is. Yeah. So my dad was raised Catholic and my mom was raised, I think, Lutheran. Okay. Could be something else. Right. And then um, they kind of met each other, started forming what they um, wanted to religion wise. So mm-hmm. ended up going to mainly non denominational churches. Okay. Which is also broad. <laughs> yeah. I've actually never been to a non-denominational. So. Really? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I know. know. I need to check it out. That's <laughs> interesting because I only went to non-denominational or vineyard. So non-denominational would mean that you just believe in Jesus, right? Like, or like Jesus is your, like that's your, your center, right? Right. So okay. you believe in the Old and the New Testament. Okay. And then you believe that... Jesus is the Son of God, and Mm -hmm. he's here to save you, Mm -hmm. save you from your sins. Mm -hmm. And then all the other denominations usually believe that, but also add Like different different traditions within there. Different traditions, different um, theology. Yeah, yeah, because, so like Catholic believes that, well, I'm just trying to think of the difference, but like, that's why we practice um, communion every Mass, is so that like Jesus died for us and for our sins on the cross and then um, (laughs) this part I honestly don't know how to explain (laughs) did you ever go to Catholic Mass? never no? I've been to a slightly Catholic we need to go on a marathon (sighs) wedding a marathon (laughs) of churches yes (laughs) so now I have been to um non-denominational evangelical free Mm mhm um, the vineyard and those were all very very similar. Right. 
then I've been to uh, what was it? Presbyterian, mm. which is quite different from those. Okay. In the sense of how they believe God operates, and uh-huh. so the other ones mainly believe that God is all knowing, and we have freedom of choice. Mm-hmm. And then my big thing, which mm-hmm. obviously everybody has a different view on the right. differences, but this right. was like the biggest thing to me that was different. Yeah was the Presbyterian Church believes to some extent we have choice Mm -hmm. but they kind of look more at how um, God already planned everything for your life yeah okay so so even though you have choice which I don't really know how they believe we have choice when God already decided what was gonna happen right interesting yeah yeah huh it's very (laughs) weird (laughs) It's confusing. Yeah. And so I obviously was raised Catholic, and then now I would say that I'm more of, like, just more of a spiritual person. I don't really want to, like, give myself a, self a title necessarily, because I feel like um, titles also kind of create, like, stigmas for things. Um, and they also box you, I think. Definitely. But what I think is interesting about that is something that, I've thought a lot about, um, at least with the Presbyterian stuff, is like humans need to control or have an uh, have a sense of, you know, what our future is going to look like, and like we want to know that, and I think that's interesting that they believe that God already has that plan already in place, and it's kind of like I almost feel like it's like a um, sorry, this is going to sound I don't want to. I don't really know how to do this podcast about religion because <laughs> I'm just exploring <laughs> ideas as they come to me, but I don't want to seem rude or, uh, like, not open-minded at all. No, you can sound voice. rude. It's fine. So, but, um, <laughs> like, to me, to me though, like, it just, like, from a human standpoint, it seems almost like a comfort measure, like, to me. Um, like, okay, this all-knowing uh, God has a plan for you. And then you, it kind of takes some of the choice out of it. Well, you feel like yeah. it doesn't really matter what you do because God already decided right. that. Right. Yes. Yeah. So like, and like you, so many people are anxious about that kind of stuff. We talk about that all the time. We're planning a trip to Australia because we're like, when are we going to do this? <laughs> <laughs> what's what's going to happen? You know, like we're all like, that's like a human thing is to be anxious about your future and like where you're going and you know, how much time you have and stuff like that. So, Right, but I think they still have that anxiety. Mm-hmm. And personally, I think it'd be more anxious to be, to believe that than just to believe we have freedom of choice and then God knows what's going to happen and he's going to work everything for your good, yeah. especially if you're trying to follow what he's, like what Crazy. he wants for you. Uh huh. So in the Bible, it has guidelines, things that you should follow. You mm-hmm. also like if you pray about what you're gonna do, and have that communication and relationship with God. It's kind of like having a relationship with your parent and being like, "This is kind of what I want," and they're like, "Well, maybe you should think this, right? Or maybe you should do this." Yeah. And then if you follow, let's say your parents were perfect, mm-hmm. and you follow everything they say, right? Like, no, they didn't have control over what you did. Right. But they gave you the opportunity to do what was right. Yes. Uh Uh-huh. And then you chose because you trusted your parents to do the right thing. Right. And if... Oh, that's comforting. So let's say your parents are perfect. Yeah. As a child, you know your parents are perfect. Uh So then you know they have your best interests. Right. So you want to do what they tell you. Right. But at the same time, you're going to still want to do the other things because that's what the other kids are doing. You don't want to be the weird one right. who's not going to the party or whatever it is. Yeah. So yeah. you still have that, do I choose what's yeah. best for me or do I choose right. what I want right now? Right. I like that explanation. So. Because I think that's what everybody's looking for. You're looking for almost like something to guide you in your life. I right. think um, something that you can trust that's consistent and that you've tried and found to be true. Right. And I think that's a lot of, like, a personal, um, 
I think you I think you have to try it and find it to be true for yourself is my big thing. True. Yeah. And that's <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's where different things that I've believed that the Bible is telling me. Yeah. Where I've stayed to it and I feel over time trust yeah. in that. Right. Cuz you're right. Yeah. We, we need repetition to right. build trust in something. Right. So. Yeah. What do you have any like specific example where you finally got to a point where you're like, okay, I've been here before. I've done this before. It's worked. I need to do this again to pull myself out of like the stressful situation or whatever. That's a good question. I know. Oh, no. Sorry. I'm very specific. <laughs> I'm sure there is. Give me a minute. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking, so like for me, this is how I got really into meditation because I was um, in prior to coming out here, um, I like wasn't sure where I wanted to go, like where I wanted to live, you know, what kind of job I necessarily wanted to have. So that was a huge stressor. And then, um, my parents weren't doing super well in their relationships. So there was a lot of like stress and tension there. And so going back to like, they were kind of like my light, you know, like that's Mm -hmm. what I trusted to know what to do in situations still do I'm not saying I don't but it was just this moment where I kind of felt like I had to find something to uh, help me get through all these like really strong emotions and so that I wouldn't go crazy with anxiety and worry and just about what could happen and what couldn't happen so then I started meditating and you like I would come back and forth and back and forth to it and then now it's been about probably like a year and a half of consistently doing it every day, mostly part. And I can feel myself like at work, like if it's going horribly, we're both nurses. I can go horribly I can, a lot. I can go horribly <laughs> a lot. But like I can, I can then, I recognize, okay, I'm feeling this. I trust in this breathing process to get me through this and I can go there and then now I get through it because I trust it and I know it will get me through it. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like that's a lot like prayer. It is. But and then that's kind of why I like it so much because I grew up praying. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. But then my thing, because the thing why I believe prayer works is because I believe someone like... Someone is not, listening. Yeah. God yeah. is listening yeah. and he's going to um, give me the things I need. Right. Which is obviously not always what I think I need. Mm-hmm. Because, like, for example, um, three, four years ago, my niece mm-hmm. died. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't trust you anymore. Right. Because you allowed this to happen. And we yeah. prayed and we prayed and we expected right. healing. But mm-hmm. that's not what happened. Mm-hmm. So then I went through this whole phase of not knowing what I wanted to do. I still believed God was real, right. but it was like the but trust it was, was that gone. trust was a break. You were like, right. or at least you felt like it was. Exactly. Until you're probably like, and then, change. Yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of months later, I ended up going to some church in California just mm-hmm. because I was visiting some friends. Mm-hmm. Super random. Yeah. Random how I even ended up going there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not like something that would have typically happened in my life. Yeah. And I'm sitting in this church I didn't even want to really go, but I was like, I should go because my friend wants to go and I should, you know, right. do this. And he's talking about his mom and how she was trying to have another kid after him mm. for years mm-hmm. and years and years and gave it up mm. and then got pregnant. And mm-hmm. she was like, wow, look what God did for me. Mm-hmm. And then after she had twins, they were born and they both died. Mm. And she was like, I didn't ask for this, God. This is not what I asked for. Right. And then he pulled out um, different stories in the Bible about where people were like, I didn't ask for this. Mm-hmm. And then he was like, and the thing is, we don't ask for this, but you have the decision to choose to believe in God or you have the decision to not believe in God. You mm-hmm. have the decision to trust him or not to trust him. Mm-hmm. That's it. Like, that's all right. it is. That's and all I was is. like, oh, right. I guess I'm going to choose to believe him. Yeah. I'm going to trust him. Right. And I was like, I don't even know what that looks like. Right. And wow. Then, <laughs> that's a great way of putting it. Yeah. Too. Because I feel like we get so bogged down with like all these 
Yeah. I mean, it's the same with, like, friendships. Yeah. I've had friends right. betray my trust. Yeah. And then I have the choice to put trust in them again. Right. Now, with friends, right. they oh, did something so wrong you're with so God. Good. Right. He didn't do something wrong. Yeah. That's just his plan. Right. Which, through that, I mean, I've learned lots and lots. And then I learned how to have compassion for families who lose their mm. loved ones because mm-hmm. I used to be like you why are these people staying behind and touching this dead person mm, mm-hmm. but after that I was like no that's still to them that person is still there even right. though we know mentally yeah. they're not there right, right so it gave me a whole new yeah. compassion towards people yeah, I love which that. is great because that's what I do right so mm-hmm. I mean even though it's a terrible situation mm-hmm. I've seen things that have been amazing Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I like this simplicity of life. I was floored. I was like, "How have I never heard <laughs> this?" <laughs> it's literally it's so, so simple. simple. <laughs> it's floory. It looks like great. Yeah, yeah. And everyone else there was probably like, "This Duh. is dumb," and I'm there <laughs> sobbing my uh, face off, going, yeah. "This is what I needed." <laughs> yes. Well, and that's like this is why I love talking about this stuff with you because I feel like, um. So much of our, I think we've talked about this before, but how, so much of our, like, generation has lost that. To to me, it's, you need to have something. Um, and I'm not super picky about what it is, and I don't think, but I know, obviously, different religions have different beliefs. But right. um, I think you need something to ground you, to bring you back, because it's a way too hard to, like, not have something to believe in, to, like, direct you and trust in and know that, because I feel like, actually, I feel like we're a lot more, if you if you don't have that something, then you turn to your emotions, and then you're not being rationally thinking at all. And, and then you let those run your life. Right, and you let those run your life, and where does that take you? Not to a good place. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's almost like it should be like, I don't know. I, don't I mean, I had a friend in college who was like, I don't believe in God. Yeah but I see how it can be good for you. So I'd want to raise my kids like that. Right. (laughs) And to me, like I get what he's, where he's coming from, but being on the other side of, yeah, I believe in God. I'm like, how, how is that all you want? Like it's so much more than just right. A ritual, a thing you do. Right. Right. Like it's not just every Sunday I go to church. Right. I make this prayer. Right. Like, so that's it's like a it's a it's a literally a light guiding your path exactly yeah 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 <laughs> <laughs> so um did you so you had your phase with your niece what about because you grew grew up then going to christian church yes okay did you have any period um other than that when you started when you questioned things um Actually, I'm sure there's lots of questioning, but... Like, here and there, yes. But at a young age, um, I was probably, like, seven. Mm -hmm. I remember praying at some conference or something, and I just got this presence that was unexplainable, and Mm -hmm. literally ever since then, Mm -hmm. I was like, this is real. This is God. Yeah. So I believe in him. Yes, Mm -hmm. I've had times where I'm like, I don't like this. Mm -hmm. I don't want to believe in him. Right. Because I want to do these other things Mm -hmm. that God wouldn't be proud of, that Mm -hmm. God wouldn't advise me to do. Mm -hmm. So beautiful. I've still always been like, (laughs) but I can't walk away from what I. I always, I always worry. um, So another thing that I really like about having some form of like spirituality or religion or whatever you want to call it is I think it's important to have a discipline as well. And I think when I decided to not be Catholic anymore, I was looking for something to still, um, I missed that discipline part of it of like, you know, going to church on Sundays with your community and, um, you know, like I liked reconciliation. <laughs> Did you, do you do that? Do you know what um, that yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's interesting because when I stopped really going to the non-denominational churches, yeah. I saw some of those things. Yeah. And now I've gone back to some of those and yeah. they've started bringing that back in. Oh, really? So yeah. it's almost like this weird, like, yeah. all of a sudden 
churches kind of started realizing the importance of that and were like actually we should start doing this again we should still keep doing this stuff yeah 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 um so i think it's important to teach kids like when you're raising them some level of discipline about um because i mean believing in anything has its ups and downs and you have to practice at it in order to really develop that relationship with it like from a christian standpoint it's like the more you pray, the closer you are with God, the more right. he's right on your mind. Right. Um, the more you talk about it, the right. more you read the Bible. Right. I mean, everything is that the, way. And then in crisis, the easier it is to go. Yes. Right. And for me, it's like the more I practice breathing, the more I notice my emotions, the more I notice how it's affecting like my perception on my day the easier it is for me to like move to a positive space versus moving to like I don't know right and I think we're getting taken away yeah it's interesting because those are like scientifically proven that they help yeah and I think that's where a lot of Christians get scared because they don't want people to agree that deep breathing right or like once my counselor was like like just touching something yeah, like when totally. you're in a moment yeah. of panic right touching something breathing right. like looking at three different things yeah. to ground you and bring you back to where you are right are actually beneficial right but it's but hard because christians your... don't want to believe that because they want it to just be god but the right. thing is like right. god created our bodies yeah and if science is going to prove that this can help our bodies right. then right. you're still like, there's still a way you can form it right. to look like right. God created you that way. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, those are definitely things that right. are I helpful, see. even if you don't have right. a bigger belief beyond right. that. Right. Yeah. Um, what do you – do you feel like as an adult there is a certain area in your life where you rely on your faith a lot more than when you were – a younger person and it was just kind of built into your routine as part of your family oh yeah yeah so I, I feel like it's hard being our age and to be religious sometimes granted we live in a very religious community in Colorado Springs but not but but still it's like it's our, our most, generation right. is like just like a, that's not like a big thing so I, I admire you for being you're you're very open about it and you're very I would say dedicated to your faith life so, right yeah and the thing that makes it easier for me is being in those bible studies yeah and having those core christian friends who help remind me and Mm -hmm. keep me there because you're right if i only made friends with people who didn't have the same beliefs right it'd be really easy to not be as dedicated Mm -hmm. (coughs) but yeah as a kid i hated reading the bible (laughs) i hated going to church i'd pretend that i was sick then I would sometimes go to church because if I pretended I was sick for church, I couldn't do anything after church. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Yeah, man, that's rough. So I had to play sick the whole day. <laughs> sometimes it wasn't worth it. Too exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> well, just go to church. I wasn't a fan of praying. I was yeah. like, this. I don't like doing this. Right, right. I was like, that sounds great. When I'm married and I have kids, I'll be like my mom. Yeah. Is oh, what I thought. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. And then somewhere in college, I like went to Christian groups and stuff mm-hmm. and somewhere in there I was like I could be that person now (laughs) I don't have to wait yeah like if I want I can be that person now (laughs) (laughs) yeah and so I started just slowly exploring what being that devoted Christian would be and so I pray about everything I pray about almost every decision I make I prayed about like what job I was going to take what car I was going to buy. I mean, Mm -hmm. sometimes the simplest things as Mm -hmm. should I go to this um, birthday party or should I go to um, this graduation, whatever it Mm -hmm. is when there's a decision. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So it's changed a lot. Yeah. But that's not because of something that I had as a kid. It's just because it's something my mom showed me. Mm Mm-hmm. So then I knew that was how you could live your life, Mm -hmm. but I never wanted to Mm -hmm. as a child until later. 
Mm-hmm. I mean, there was one time in middle school I had mm-hmm. the choice to stay at the charter school or the public school, and I remember praying about it mm-hmm. and feeling that I should go to the public school. Yeah. And so that's what I did. Like, once right. in a blue moon, I would right. make have those prayers, but mm-hmm. usually it was, yeah, if I have to. Yeah. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I'll go to church. <laughs> I'll go to youth group because they sometimes do fun things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think that's that's interesting as like where you find your place within it um, as an adult. Because a lot of times I think there's some direction from parents about what it looks like. And then um, to find your own place within your belief system is like can be very um I almost think it's, like, one of the biggest blessings, though, honestly. I felt like I learned more about who I am when I... And my parents have been awesome about... um, Like, they've always supported me to kind of challenge things and Hmm. figure it out and where I fit in within my belief structure and things like that. And I feel like if you ask those questions and you go down that road, then you just you know who you are better and it just also helps you stay closer to that path <laughs> that like ominous path that we don't actually know where it's going but you know who you are and you know that you're going to be okay because you know how to get back to that spot right because if you never question anything yeah then you don't even know where you are yeah you don't even know what your path is really. you don't know what you yeah. believe in you don't yeah. know where to turn mm-hmm. you're just like meandering but when you start questioning and you're like that's not that's not right Right. then you start forming that path that you Mm -hmm. belong on so can i ask you a difficult one oh probably (laughs) (laughs) so i'm just and like this is like totally open and um i you may not even have a like a good answer for this but well actually i have two difficult ones (laughs) okay (laughs) um so I don't know how, maybe non-denominational is a little bit different though, but um, the Catholic structure is like very patriarchal because um, like it's like priests are only males, um, certain positions within the church are only males. Um, it's kind of like you see when, when we talked about God growing up, he was seen as a male and um There was this whole thing as growing up as a girl within that of, Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say like, because it was always all loving and all, um, but, but there was definitely like a gender difference and it almost made, almost felt like, uh, the women's role in this patriarchal, uh, religious domain was like very, uh, like less and non-equal and, I struggled a lot with that um, now as an adult looking back, but I don't know, is that, do you even have that experience in, in just like non-denominational or? No, there are a few churches outside of Catholicism that mm-hmm. do believe only men can be like on, be a pastor or an elder. Mm. Um, I believe, I'm not 100% sure on this, somewhere mm-hmm. in the Bible it talks about elders only being men. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, my knowledge of elders is not great either, but I know they're a huge part of how the, like the, how the church runs. Mm -hmm. Um, and what's, what's your response to that then? I guess. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, I, the Bible from my memory also says that they have to be married men. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very important because that means those men are seeing a woman's side of life mm. versus if they're all single men. Mm. Like, I think in the Catholic Church, yeah, aren't they all? Are, yeah, they're single men. Married. Yep. Mm-hmm. So when they're married, then they're supposed to become one with this woman. They're supposed to love her and s- understand her. And then she can also put in her input because, mm. I mean, what marriage do you not talk about your job? Oh, right. So... <laughs> And I think that's kind of where things have really helped. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I like then, that because then it's kind of like you're getting your two perspectives still. Right, even, even though, though it's not within the, role the is, committee or okay. the group or whatever you want to call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then 
the churches I grew up in, you would still see women um, in the children's churches. You would still see women making announcements. Once in a blue moon, you'd see a woman um, like a guest speaker mm. as a pastor. Mm. Um, so I never felt that okay. way. Yeah. And then also like things they talked about from the Bible were where Jesus came and dignified women like mm-hmm. um, where um, he helped the woman who was committing adultery and they wanted to stone her Mm -hmm. and he protected her Mm -hmm. and told them like the first person who hasn't sinned can cast the first stone and everyone left so good or the woman at the well like there's lots of situations where jesus stands up for women exactly right and then they also talk about how the church is the bride Mm -hmm. of christ oh so now all of a sudden the men are women and right in the like worldly view of right the bride and the groom type of thing right so there's yeah. just different spots where they've i've seen the church like bring in women and right. they're like also men here mm-hmm. does not mean just men right it means everyone right it's just kind of like different roles within this like domain right this tradition basically i mean yeah. there are a few spots in the bible where it talks about like um woman he said like Paul wrote how women should stay quiet in the church and ask their husband questions. Yeah. <laughs> and that one I've struggled with a lot <laughs> because I don't really believe it. <laughs> right. Right. And it's one of those things where you're like, but that was culturally. But right. then I'm like, but then if I'm saying that part in the Bible was culture, where am I drawing your line? Exactly. Right. And I still don't have an answer and to that one because answer. I really hate that line. Right. Right. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. And then and it then, talks yeah. about the woman's role in a marriage, right? But that one I think is beautiful because oh, okay. tell me that one. The woman is to respect the husband, mm-hmm. and the man is to love the woman. Mm. And what do us women want? We want to be loved. We yeah. want to be protected. Mm-hmm. We want to be understood. Men right. want to be respected. Yes. So it literally says right there right. exactly what us women and us men want. Right. But. Right. It seems so weird because right. we're like, shouldn't we both do that? Right. Like, shouldn't it be the same? But it, we're not the same people. We're not the same. We're really different. Oh, God, we can <laughs> talk about this now. <laughs> yeah. So that's like and the then, one spot where I think it really shows a huge difference. But mm-hmm. I also think it's because we are really created differently. Mm-hmm. So I like that. I, I think I just, um, a lot of it, too, for me was like this whole... Um, almost like this patriarchal um i don't know how to say this but you know i don't remember what religion it is and mine wasn't like this necessarily but the idea of like a purity ring is like something that your dad gives you and he tells you basically when it's okay to like the whole body stuff for me got just a little bit difficult because i um, I felt like it was like someone else telling you that it was okay to accept your body and its emotions and its feelings and things like that for where it was at versus like you accepting those things. Does that make sense? Yes. <laughs> do you, what do you think about purity race? Well, <laughs> I'm really drilling you right now. I'm sorry. I really want to know what you think, though, because you have such beautiful answers. You've really studied the Bible. I'm impressed. Oh, there are many people who know way more than me. You have so many good... Yeah, I love it, though. So, growing up, my parents, um, like, taught us about purity, taught Mm -hmm. us to save that for marriage. Right. And that was, like, a huge thing. We all were, like, on board, 100%. Right. I would think I was, like, 14, 16... And I personally was like, I want a purity ring. Right. So I asked my parents for a purity ring. (laughs) And I got one, and I loved it. And Uh, then I played sports, so I had to take it off for different sports and somehow lost it. Oh. And then I was scared. I was like, what if my parents think that I'm not pure because I lost this? But none of my other sisters had one. My brother didn't have one. This was like a thing I wanted. Right. If they're listening, (laughs) pretend I didn't lose it, Mom. (laughs) Um, Holla at Nadine's mom <laughs> <laughs> from the Big Famous podcast. <laughs> uh, 
So, I mean, they never noticed. They didn't care. Like, because their thing was they cared that we made the right choice, not based on a ring. Right. And they also didn't do the, they'll tell me when it's okay. Mm. Because they taught us that it's okay to lose your virginity in a marriage. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, and I mean, you could say like the dad's giving the daughter away and the wedding is kind of like taking the purity ring away or whatever mm. you want. Right. Okay. But I never saw it as that. We s- right. talked about like when the your dad is handing you off, it's more of the dad's job is to protect you mm. and keep you safe mm-hmm. and provide for you. So mm-hmm. now that, he, and I mean, it's a little hard because like right now, my dad is my protector, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I don't live with him. I own my own house. Right. I pay all my own bills. Yeah, you're but at the same that. time, yeah. he is, my parents are the people I go to first. Right. But that's like a symbolize of now this guy you're going to marry yeah. is the guy you go to first. Mm. Yeah. So that's more of that view, okay. not necessarily yeah. the body part. Right, right, right. Yeah. My view on that, I yeah. think I would have a hard time if my parents... <laughs> acted as though they had control over my body right they also never told us any physical lines where to draw Mm. you know first second third base those (laughs) types of things they never told us what we could and couldn't do right i wish now we had that discussion right i know and i always because it's still a weird thing where you're like right no one understands that right and it's it's a weird thing for me too because um I don't know, obviously, like, being a pediatric nurse, I understand how difficult, it, like, raising a child is, and, like, um, and then also being raised Catholic, like, I have a very, like, special appreciation for sex. <laughs> 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 We're just going to throw all that out there. But, but for me, it became something more of, like, um, I wanted to respect, like, uh, I wanted to respect life the life that can come from that action versus Mm. it being uh, like something about I just always I just always struggled with like um, like is it like where was this whole marriage thing that came out about do you know anything about that what do you mean like why why was it like okay wait until marriage because in the bible it talks about it does it yeah okay that makes sense then yeah yeah so The idea is sex, um, like, I don't, like, it's more than just a physical act. Mm -hmm. It's, like, binds your soul together. Mm. And that's what makes you one along with the covenant of marriage. Mm. And that's Mm -hmm. why people call, what is, what do they call it? When you confirm the marriage or you... Oh, yeah. Like, the first night. Yeah, what is that called? Um... (laughs) I know what you're talking about, though. But that's uh, where that idea yeah. came from, I okay. think, okay. is that's what the Bible says. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I don't remember where I was going. Oh, well, I was just, like, I just feel like it's just, I just always struggled because I felt like it's, a, like, a very natural feeling. And I, I just felt like um, there was, like, a wall sometimes between... And not saying that you should listen to your net, like all of, all of your feelings, but I also feel like um, it was something that, like, you could almost be very afraid of, and yes. and those feelings that you that come with, oh, I'm like really attracted to this person, and things are going this way, and but then there's this you are raised like to believe it's. A right. bad thing a to bad do. Thing. Yes. Yeah. I read this book, Party of One. I don't know who <laughs> wrote it. <laughs> and she wrote about those things, like yeah. how we focus in Christianity so much on avoid sex, don't have sex. Sex right. is bad. Right. And then all of a sudden, people get married and they're like, "I can't have sex. Yeah. Sex is bad." Right. And there's. It's like a mind block because right. you've been trained to think that for so long. Right. And then. Yeah. So it's like how she like was like, how do we bring it in as it's not bad? It's mm-hmm. beautiful, mm-hmm. but in the right context. Right. Like in the right settings. Mm-hmm. And yeah. Right. And, and so, so like the right setting would be within a committed relationship, AKA a marriage. Right. Got it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. we have this 
they build this mindset in ch- children that it's so bad mm-hmm. that they are scared of it. Right. And then sometimes they're scared to even date or right. the opposite, the rebellious. So instead they're like, we're going to have sex, even though that's not what they really want. Mm-hmm. So it's just like... Because they almost, you just want to like get that feeling out of the way. Right. Like you don't want to be afraid of it anymore because you want to know what it is and stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's also talked about, which I thought was very interesting, is the church talks about don't have sex before marriage, don't Mm -hmm. have sex before marriage. So Mm -hmm. then you're thinking about sex before marriage, right? Right. She's like, it's the same thing as don't eat those Skittles. Don't eat the Skittles. (laughs) Don't eat the Skittles. And you're like, I wasn't even thinking about the Skittles. (laughs) But but now now that you said don't eat the Skittles, I just want to eat Skittles. (laughs) (laughs) She's like, so why don't we focus on what we can do? And what we should do yes, versus what we can't do. Yes. Like, yeah, put that out there. Mm-hmm. But let's focus on the things we can do. Right. And what dating should look like then. Right. And the things you should do in dating. Because mm-hmm. if you have a focus of, oh, in dating, I should be learning these things about them. Mm-hmm. Or I should be having fun or I should be whatever it is. Right. Then your focus is on that versus, well, in this dating relationship, I can't have sex with them. Right. Then yeah. that's all you're thinking that's about. That's all you're thinking about. Yeah. No, and I really like that. And I, I feel like that's something, another area, like when I have kids, I, I'm not sure like how to bridge that. And I like that because I think it's important. I feel like I have a lot of respect for life because of my job. But how do you teach a kid like, hey, this is this act is not just kissing. <laughs> like <laughs> This is like yeah, a whole other human <laughs> Right. (laughs) And you have to respect that and stuff. But that's like, I feel like something like a personal journey that I've been on. But um, yeah, I like that because that's how it was for me growing up. It was just like, hey, you can't do this. So then that's all you thought about. And it was constantly this like burden of, oh, I really want to do this. But and like this guy, I really like, you know, he wants to do this, but then I feel guilty about all this. And it's just like this whole whirlwind. Mm-hmm. And you don't know. You can't find your path. You can't find your light. <laughs> well, I also think yeah. because I have plenty of friends who are Christians who are right. like, I don't believe that. All right. But I think it's because we were never showed where in the Bible Yeah. it said that. Like, I somewhere in college was like does it even say that mm-hmm. or do people just make this up right because they are scared they don't want us to do this right <laughs> does it even say that we shouldn't get drunk like right. all these different things right and i started being like i want to find this in the bible because i don't remember this being in the bible right so i think a huge thing is they should back it up with the bible mm-hmm well, and I think for you, at least, definitely, too, you, you find a lot of truth. Obviously, you you find truth within the Bible. And right. So if that's it's a huge guiding path. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Aw, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was pretty good, man. Oh, can I ask you one more difficult one? Yeah. How do you approach the gay topic? Ooh, that's good. Uh, that was another thing I really struggled okay. with. Okay. So... There might be a lot of haters out there. <laughs> Here it goes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so well, my I have three listeners. <laughs> <laughs> my view is, according to the Bible, yeah, it says it's not right. Mm-hmm. That's not how God created us. That's not how it should be. It mm-hmm. is sinful. Mm-hmm. That being said, I will never expect someone who's not a Christian mm-hmm. to uphold those standards because that's ridiculous right like i can't expect even sex before marriage i won't expect Mm -hmm. non-christian friends Mm -hmm. to not have sex before marriage Mm -hmm. because they're not that's not what they believe right so i can still love them i will still treat them the same Mm -hmm. all of that right within the church that makes it a lot harder right i will still be their friend i will still love them right but i still believe it's a sin right but I also believe a lot of other things are sins, and I believe I do a lot of sins. I know I am right. sinful. You're, yeah. So that cast the first stone thing. Yes, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Right. It makes it hard because yeah, that's a hard one. It's a little different than just these other things, like oh, mm-hmm. gossip is sin. Right. Okay, but that's not something every day I wake up and I'm like, I'm gonna gossip today. Right. But if you're gay, you're like, I am gay. Right. So it's a little different, like how 
you go about it, but it doesn't mm-hmm. change how I feel towards them. Right. It's I've just... had Christian friends who are gay. I've uh-huh. had ones who have gone through different healing processes mm-hmm. and were like, I'm not gay. I was just had a lot of hurts mm-hmm. as a child through mm-hmm. different family processes. Mm-hmm. And now I'm like, I don't believe I am gay. I have other friends who believe they are gay mm-hmm. and they still still believe they're gay they've still believe they're gay Mm -hmm. and struggle with that trying to refrain from making the acts with someone Mm. which i think is really hard right it's a it's like it's like one of those things i just feel like there really has not still been a good answer out there for like for like because i love what you said like i i've heard that a lot like you love them you include them within your church and everything but it's still like within the bible technically you know it's considered a sin and like right. i feel like that that is just like such a judgmental a thing to say that it like it's difficult for a lot of christians to figure out how to navigate that then because you don't you're not judgmental and you're not not accepting like that's like the foundation of your religion right so to yeah, it's just a difficult... I feel like it's yeah. the same, though, as saying, right. I believe you're going to hell versus I believe you're going to heaven. Right. Like, that's pretty brutal, too. That is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> is that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about that? What do I think? <laughs> D- don't, I feel like most Christians uh, like will say that it's something that it's God's decision and it's not theirs and like it's not your place, right? Isn't that kind of what you believe? Well, yes and no. Okay. So, ultimately, yes. Okay. Because I can't say what that person believes. Mm -hmm. Because there are people who identify as Christians but Mm -hmm. are not Christians. Mm -hmm. There are people, like, there are people who are Christians but don't use that label because of the stigma that they get. Right. So, in that regard, yeah, I can't say. Mm -hmm. But someone who blatantly... Mm -hmm doesn't believe in christ and doesn't believe Mm -hmm. jesus is the son of god Mm -hmm. according to the bible they are not going to heaven right so that's what i can say but i can't say individually who is going to heaven and hell right at least i can't fully right grasp what people believe Mm -hmm. only god knows that Mm -hmm. if that makes sense is that is that a difficult part for you oh yeah yeah and it's hard because you're like this sounds so mean right but if i don't believe that then i don't believe, believe the, the Bible. whole thing right 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 which is like your yeah and that's where like a huge part of mm-hmm. um where dating and marrying someone who's a christian mm-hmm. is very important to me there's a right. lot more to it but this is right. one that like yeah sticks out to me the most those are is i can't fathom being married to someone and not believing like right. they're gonna be saved right yeah even though there's a lot more to why I believe that's right. should be how it is, right. but that's yeah. just one thing that I think, right, like just makes me be like I couldn't be married to someone who's, yeah, that's a lot, man. Yeah, it sounds mean. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think, didn't write the I Bible, so right. that's where it's like almost. Oops, <laughs> did I break it? No, I think. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think it's just it's going back to. Um, you've done a lot of exploring and like you figured out what what your your ground is in the bible and god and jesus and you know that that's your ground and you can't half-ass that and i think that's what i I right and that's where i'm like i it's this isn't like an idea i came up with yes people will judge me because it's something i accepted right but people are going to judge you for anything you accept that's a great way to phrase it right yeah yeah I feel like that's why I love talking about this stuff with you. It's because, you know, <laughs> like, I feel like we're both, like, I'm very confident in what I believe as well. And I don't feel like either of us half-ass what we believe. No, we just tell <laughs> like, each other what we believe. That's what like, I believe. good for you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but I feel I like... I disagree. <laughs> <laughs> right. But I feel like, too, also, like, within our job, especially, um, you know, you have to, like... I think it helps us be better nurses and better people 
You know right. what I mean? Regardless but, of like, the fact that to, I believe other have, religions are right, wrong, right. I still believe right. having a religion and something right. to help guide you yeah. makes this life on earth easier. So much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Now, do I agree with <laughs> what's going to happen after life? Right. No. Right. But right. I agree with you on right. it helps with where we're at. Mm-hmm. At, on this earth to and help you can't half ass it alright well thanks so much man <laughs> you're not amazing thanks for inviting me <laughs> <laughs> as we sit here in the dark at library 21c 